Breaking news right now. So far today, Hezbollah in Lebanon has fired 150 rockets into Israel. Rocket sirens continue to sound throughout Israel as Hezbollah continues to fire rockets at Israeli cities and towns. Several people were hurt in the attacks on Haifa and the greater Tel Aviv area. This morning, my family and I were woken up with a run to the bomb shelter. And as I was getting ready to come to the studio, I had another run to the shelter. And as I was driving to the studio, I was nervous that I would be on the open highway with nowhere to hide if the siren went off. I've been reading reports about a possible ceasefire between Israel and Hezbollah. And I have to ask, what ceasefire? The state of Israel is under attack on seven different fronts. We have no choice but to keep fighting until we are safe in our homes. We say seven fronts around Israel, but really there are eight fronts if you count attacks on the Jewish people around the world. I'm sure you have seen the news about how true this really is. The whole world needs to wake up. The Iranian regime is targeting Jews wherever they live. Rabbi Tzvi Kogan of blessed memory was a Chabad emissary in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. He went missing last Thursday. His body was found around 150 kilometers away in the city of Al Ain, near the border with Oman. According to reports, the Iranian regime recruited citizens of Uzbekistan to murder the rabbi. The assailants fled to Turkey. The Iranian regime is the greatest threat to peace and security in the world. Iran murdered a rabbi in the United Arab Emirates because Iran's war isn't confined to any specific borders. Iran's war isn't about policy disagreements. The Iranian regime wants to break apart the Abraham Accords peace agreement between Israel and the UAE. It wants to destroy Israel. And it wants to attack Jewish people wherever they live. We need massive international pressure on the Iranian regime so that it cannot continue to terrorize the whole world. The Iranian regime backed the October 7th massacre, the deadliest attack on Jews since the Holocaust. For more than a year now, Iran has been leading a multi-front war against the Jewish state. Hamas in Gaza, terrorists in Judea and Samaria, Hezbollah in Lebanon, Houthi pirates in Yemen, Iranians in Syria, Iranian militias in Iraq, and of course, the Iranian regime itself. It's not just Jews that Iran is targeting. Iran and its proxy armies murder many others in the Middle East, namely Sunni Muslims, as part of its global religious war. Iran is behind the death of thousands of US and Western troops, whether in Lebanon in the 1980s or more recently in Iraq and Afghanistan. And the Jewish communities have long been Iranian targets. Iran is behind the deadliest terror attacks on Jews around the world. Iran was behind the bombing of a Jewish community center in Argentina in 1994, which killed 85 people. A week after that attack, Iran detonated car bombs across London. This week, British bomb squads detonated suspective, suspected explosive devices in a London airport, train station, and outside the U.S. Embassy. Yesterday, British security forces revealed 15 Iranian plots to either kidnap or kill British or UK-based individuals whom it considers enemies of the regime. The threat from Iran is real. The threat is so high that the British government told an Iranian dissident news organization that its safety couldn't be guaranteed in the UK. Earlier this year, American officials announced Iranian plots to assassinate political leaders and manipulate the elections. Just last week, Canada announced an Iranian assassination attempt on former Justice Minister Erwin Kotler. He is a prominent member of Canada's Jewish community. Remember, Iran calls the Jewish state the little Satan, but Iran calls America the great Satan. What starts with the Jewish people and the Jewish state doesn't end with them. Iran's plans to acquire nuclear weapons are an ex existential threat to the Jewish people, but they were a threat to everyone else too. Do you know who else is harboring a threat? We need to talk about Turkey. Turkey is supposedly a Western ally. It is a member of the NATO alliance. There are reports that the murderers of Rabbi Tzvi Kogan in the UAE have fled to Turkey. It's not surprising. The president of Turkey has long supported Hamas. After the October 7th massacre, President Erdogan 
praised Hamas. After allegedly being kicked out of Qatar, Hamas's leaders are now reportedly in Turkey. This is absurd. As a NATO member state, Turkey is entitled to the protection of the US, the UK, and Germany if it is ever attacked. And Turkey is pledged to protect them as well. A country that harbors terrorists is not an ally. Hamas leaders should not be safe anywhere. We need more pressure on Turkey so that Hamas leaders will be extradited to face justice for their crimes against humanity. Let's take some questions from our audience watching live on social media. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Ashley. We have two questions from Instagram about what you said about Hezbollah. How is it that Hezbollah still has so many rockets? How do you assess the current strength of Hezbollah in Lebanon? Well, Hezbollah has been building its military capability for many, many years, and especially since the previous Second Lebanon War, which ended, of course, with a resolution calling for Hezbollah to disarm itself and not be on the Israeli border. Of course, no one enforced it. Hezbollah didn't, uh, didn't listen to this resolution. UNIFIL was put in place to make sure that wasn't happening. We all know at this point that that is what it, they have been doing since 2006. They have been building their military, military capability and arsenal. And it was estimated that at the beginning of the war, they had hundreds and thousands of rockets. And so despite Israel's tremendous success in taking out Hezbollah leaders, and also taking out many, many weapons storage and rocket storage facilities, as we can see, they still have uh, the capability to shoot rockets all across Israel, and they are still ter terrorizing us every day. And that is why it is essential, essential to know that Hezbollah's rocket capability has been taken out so that the um, civilians living on the northern border will feel comfortable to go back to their home, or at least to have an agreement that will be enforced by the Lebanese government and the international community that Hezbollah will not come near our border ever again. Our next question is from Joe on YouTube, who asks a very simple question. What will it take to stop Iran? <sighs> what a question. Uh, many of us uh, believe, I mean, there's no right or wrong answer, but many of us believe that the Iranian regime needs to go. And when I say many of us, I don't speak only in terms of people living in Israel. I speak also on behalf of the people living within Iran who would like very much to see the Iranian regime topple and, grow, and, and, and go. Of course, we will not be able to live in a world where Iran has nuclear capabilities. And um, we hope to see that that will be resolved in the near future. Our next question is from Instagram. This is a person asking about the fate of the hostages. There was a report that perhaps one of the hostages was killed recently. Do you have any information on the whereabouts and well-being of the hostages? So I personally do not have any knowledge other than uh, what you have seen. Um, there are many rumors circling social media. It is important not to spread these rumors until we have real accurate information. Remember, these are real people with real families and every rumor that goes out on social media or wherever it is without concrete evidence or facts just puts those families into deeper turmoil, deeper um, uh, pain and hurt, not knowing the fate of our hostages. What I can tell you is that the weather has changed here in Israel. It has become significantly colder. And this week we are um, approaching a very cold and, and wintry week. And we know that with the hostages losing a significant amount of their body weight, um, it, the, the weather is increasing the danger and, and the fate of the hostages. So every day they remain there, it is a imminent danger to their well-being and they need to be released now. We have seen reports of protests in Montreal against Jews, against Israel. Can you explain what is going on in Canada? So me being a Canadian-born citizen as well, I was completely appalled to see what, has, what happened in Montreal over the weekend. But in all honesty, we have seen the, the groundwork being put there for many, many years. Uh, unfortunately, there is not a tough enough uh, stance against anti-Semitic calls, against the protests, the encampments, 
And this isn't new. We have been, we've seen this really developing over the past 20 years since I was a university student on my Canadian campus 20 years ago. And um, unfortunately, we saw what that, what that looks like. And so when they call to globalize the Intifada, this is what they mean. They want to bring chaos and destruction, not only to the Jewish state, but to all of Western civilization and countries that don't, you know, really put their, their foot down and are really tight on the security of what is happening in their country. We're unfortunately, if I could predict, we're going to be seeing more and more riots like we saw in Montreal across other major cities in the West, if nothing is done to stop, to stop them and bring the perpetrators to justice. This is our last question today. What is your message for Jews living around the world who are dealing with all of the threats that you've just mentioned? That's a tough question. Um, on the one hand, I really, really encourage everybody to never bow, you know, put their head down, bow their head in shame, hide who they are, their identity. On the other hand, it is important, you know, your personal safety and to not put yourself in situations where you could be in any physical danger. But call out everything that you see is wrong. Reach out to your local representatives, your members of parliament, if you're Canadian or British, um, your senators, your governors, if you and your congressmen, if you are American, and demand action. Show your governments that you will not sit idly by and allow your Western civilization to be taken over by jihadists who are trying to bring down the West, not only as a Jew, but also as a citizen of America, of Canada, of Australia, of France, of the UK, wherever you live, demand action, don't stay silent, and try, you know, I think my best, um, my best advice is try to recruit the silent majority, because there is a silent majority that stands by Israel and stands by the Jewish people, and they see very well what is happening across Western civilization. Try to recruit them to be more vocal because it is not only a Jewish fight. It is a fight for Western civilization. That's all the time that we have today. Thank you very much for watching. We'd also like to announce our new Spanish language channels, links in the description and across our platforms. Giving Tuesday is two weeks away. Keep an eye out for how you can contribute to our campaign. Thank you very much, and we will see you again tomorrow, three o'clock Israel time. Have a good day.